Hello, I'm recording this message for the 27th of December 2020 back in my home, hence the different background. It is because my original recording, which I did earlier uh, in the church, uh, was when I played it back, was full of uh, uh, such a loud crackling that you couldn't even hear my voice. Uh, so I'm re-recording, so you'll hopefully get a, a, a better message because it's being recorded um, for the second time. Um, but there's not time now to go back down to the church and record uh, and then get it up on the internet in time for the morning of the 27th. So I, I hope the background doesn't affect uh, you receiving the message because in these different days wherever we are we take opportunity to hear and share God's word so I pray that this morning God would speak to you as you hear his word let's pray father we ask you now to lead us as we open up the scriptures and that you would indeed teach us your ways. Let us hear your voice through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please turn in your Bibles or look on your phone or tablet or computer. Please turn to Luke chapter 2 and starting at verse 22. Luke chapter 2, starting at verse 22. Reading from the English Standard Version. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marvelled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts for many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Praise God for his word. As I touched on on Christmas Day, 
Christmas history is not simply a nice story, but is real events happening to real people in troubled times. Israel at the time of Luke was, at the time of which rather Luke was writing, was ruled by the Romans. Herod was the king, insane king. People were suffering and in great need. And it's into this context that Christ the Saviour comes. Because he is the Saviour at all times, not simply good times or average times, but also difficult times. It is in these hard times that we find it hard to see that God is working, but he is working. He is the light shining in the darkness. And there are two people in this passage that I've read to you, two named people who are waiting for the light. Now, these two people through the ages recorded for us are an example and a challenge to us in our day. I want to start by speaking to those of you who are watching this video either by accident or because it's been recommended to you and you're not yet a Christian. And the question I need to ask you is, are you ready? Ready for what? The first coming of Jesus that we read about at the Christmas in, at Christmas time and we read of in the word of God. The first Christmas story is the coming of Jesus to this earth, God made flesh. But his first coming prefigures, points us to a second coming. And just as Simeon and Anna were waiting for the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, so we today are, all of us, even if we're not Christians, the challenge comes, is are we ready for when he comes again? Because in this passage, we notice that the light of Jesus, who Jesus was, we, we saw last Sunday, a light shined in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. That's John 1 verse 5. Here in this passage, with all the people in Jerusalem and Bethlehem, we see a few shepherds. We saw them on Christmas Day. Next Sunday, we will see those wise men that came from the east, from far away. But here in Jerusalem, in the capital city, where the worship of God, so there was religion, there was the worship of God, and yet only these two are named. Plus, at the end of verse 38, we read about others that Anna spoke to, the end of verse 38. So we've only got these few people who are ready and seeking the Lord. So I need to ask you, are you ready? Are you seeking to be found by the Lord Jesus? Simon, Simeon rather, verse 25, was waiting for the consolation of Israel. That's a name that is given to the Messiah, the one who would come to bring comfort to God's people and deliverance in the darkness. And Anna, in verse 37, was waiting, worshipping, 
with fasting and prayer. Do you recognise who Jesus is? Is he just a baby in a manger that is a nice story? Or do you see him as he really is? In a little while we'll look at what Simeon says about him as the salvation, as the light to the world. So one who would come and expose people's hearts. He is a true Messiah, the true Saviour, who's come to save, yes, even you. Even though you don't yet know Jesus, he's come to save even you, if you will but believe on him. Now, Simeon and Anna would have said and will say in heaven, it's all of God's grace. But nonetheless, they were seeking him. It was by grace they were seeking him, but they were seeking him. I need to urge you to seek him. The only way to be saved, the only way to know God, the only way to be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ is to know him today. So call upon him now. You can pause this video and you can pray, Jesus, save me. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, my life is full of sin. I need the forgiveness that you've purchased for me on the cross. I need the life that you, you can give me through your resurrection. I need to have peace with God through my sins being forgiven. And he will hear your cry. and He will come to you and he will save you. And, and these uncertain days Jesus is the only certainty. He is the unchanging and eternal saviour. So I urge you to call upon him. But let me also speak to those of us who are Christians. Firstly, a word of encouragement and then a word of challenge. Again, on this whole question of are you ready? The encouragement is that even when things are dark and difficult, as they have been throughout 2020, and not just because of COVID, many of us have had very troubled times in addition to COVID. In the darkness, it's hard to see that God is really working. But here in Luke 2, 22 to 38, amid all the spiritual darkness, and economic and social trouble in Jerusalem and in the, the, the in the land of Israel and Galilee in those times God is at work your average person wouldn't see it but there's Simeon and there's Anna and as we move into 2021 I want to encourage you Christian keep praying for those who don't know Jesus keep trusting him to work in their lives because even when you can't see it there will be people that you're praying for that will become Simeon's and Anna's men and women who will seek God and will come and embrace the Lord Jesus just as Simeon picked up and carried the babe Christ in his arms so people in their heart will embrace Christ. Yes, even in these troubled days. So keep on praying. But secondly, and here's a challenge to Christians under this heading, are you ready? Are you as eager, Christian, as eager for Christ's second coming as Simeon and Anna were for his first. They were looking forward with longing and yearning for Messiah to come. And that first coming is a pointer forward to a greater day. That greater day when Christ returns. Are we like them seeking crying out how long and while 
They faithfully served God. They were not tied to this earth. And I'm not saying in being ready that we become monks or we go and live in a church building and fast and pray 24 hours a day. I'm not necessarily saying that at all, but what I am saying is their attitude and even while they lived on this earth, they were ready for Christ's coming. And Simeon's attitude there in verse 29, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. Now we assume Simeon was old, but we're not told how old he was. But his attitude, whether he was 20, 40, 80 or older was I'm ready I'm ready are you ready not just old ones but are you ready to meet Christ in either your death on this earth or in his second coming so the first thing then are you ready the second thing is that readiness comes from the word of God applied by the Holy Spirit and it's very interesting and there's not time in this message to go through all the detail but if you go through these verses you will see repeated references and allusions to Old Testament scripture particularly to the book of Isaiah and it seems perhaps Simeon and perhaps Luke also, as he wrote this account, was meditating on the book of Isaiah. So that reference to the consolation of Israel. Now, consolation in modern English often has, a, has that sense of a, a consolation prize, like something for someone who's lost something and they've lost first prize and they get something little on the side. But this is consolation in a different sense consolation in the sense of comfort of overwhelming comfort and peace and healing and uplifting and in uh, verse 25 uh, the Lord Jesus described as that the consolation of Israel Isaiah 52 9 the Lord has comforted his people Isaiah 40 verse 1 comfort comfort my people so Simeon's expectation was coming through the word of God in verse 30 Simeon says my eyes have seen your salvation and in Isaiah 52 verse 10 it says all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of your God Jesus is that salvation in verse 32 Jesus described as a light for revelation of to the Gentiles a light for revelation to the Gentiles and at the end of Isaiah 42 and verse 6 we read I will give you as a covenant for the people a light for the nations in verse 34 Simeon speaks of the falling and rising of many in Isaiah 8 and verse 14, the coming Messiah is described as a sanctuary and a stone of offence and a rock of stumbling. So Jesus is both the, 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 the effect of Jesus' ministry is arising for those who believe and a falling, a stumbling for those who don't believe. And I'm sharing these with you to underline something so important that hope is generated through the scriptures hope is generated through the scriptures and applied to us by the holy spirit yes simeon received a specific revelation mentioned in verse 26 that he would not die before he had seen the lord christ but even that specific revelation had was drawn out of the assurance, the confidence given through the word of God. And for us today, the way we will have hope 
an expectation, not just a hope so, not just a hope that things get better, but an expectation and a hope in God comes through the word. We must, in these dark days, a light, your word is a a, a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. His word is these things to us and his word speaks to us so that we have that great confidence and assurance in him. And this word does bring hope when we feel hopeless. And the Holy Spirit, as we pray over the word of God, quickens them to us. And the great hope we have and the assurance we have is because the scriptures describe to us who Christ is. So verse 25, the consolation of Israel. The consolation of Israel, so confidence because of who Christ is. As I said, it means comfort and peace and healing. They, in the time that this is recording about, they in that time were lost and without peace. The world today is a world without true comfort. There are bandages over festering wounds, promises from politicians and scientists and economists that things will get better, but in the end, they won't change the inner heart of men and women and boys and girls. We need that inner transformation. We need the permanent help. A Christian has their comfort in Christ that would enable us to say, now you're letting your servant depart in peace. It says in verse 29, he's come as alongside us. That's what another a way of translating the world word consolation, one who comes alongside. Jesus has done that in coming and becoming flesh for us and dying and rising for us. He comforts us in his intercession and he has sent another comforter, the third person of the Trinity, the precious Holy Spirit, to walk alongside us and dwell within us. In verse 30, it says, for my eyes have seen your salvation. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the promised one. He's the one, verse 38, who will bring redemption. He will pay the debt for our sins. He is the rescuer. He is the one who brings us out of darkness, saves us from the wrath we deserve, brings us into the kingdom of his light. He rescues us from slavery to sin and he keeps us in his hand to present us spotless before the Father on that final day. It says in verse 31, you have prepared in the presence of all the peoples. He is the one for all. That's why if you have stumbled over this message or you're listening as by invitation from a Christian friend, this message is for you. He will save you. He will set you free from your slavery to sin. He will bring you into the kingdom of his glorious light. This is what he will do. And if you're a Christian, this is what he has done for you. Verse 32 speaks of him being a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for the people of Israel. Glory because they had the scriptures and now he was a fulfillment. Light because in the, the, the time of Christ's first coming, most nations had no light of scripture. Now we have that light. Jesus has come and the word of God and the gospel have gone out across the nations. It's come to the United Kingdom. And you're sitting here somewhere in the world, most of you probably in southeast London, because light has come. Jesus has come to rescue us from the darkness, to bring us into his kingdom. And however dark the world around gets, Christ has come as saviour. So are you ready? Are you grounding your assurance in scripture? Have you looked and seen who Jesus is to give you that confidence? 
But finally, let's reflect on what a great cost. What a great cost. Simeon turns in verse 34 to speak to Mary. Yes, the great salvation will go throughout the world, but it will come to her. And indeed, it came for us at great cost. Notice it says, firstly, in verse 34, he is appointed, appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel. Firstly, appointed shows us that the coming of Jesus and the living and dying and rising and ascending of Jesus is God's eternal plan. It is God's eternal plan. Not a mistake. Christmas Day is not a mistake. Good Friday is not a mistake. And if that great, great salvation wrought by God the Son is not a mistake, so your life and what you're going through today is not a mistake. We see the cost seen in the effect of Jesus. Again, verse 34. The child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel. The fall, self-righteous, those who don't see their need of him, those who still perhaps outwardly maintain their positions in the eyes of people, but they have no standing in the sight of God. I don't care if you are a multi-millionaire and you're praised by people. If you reject Jesus, you have no standing in the sight of God. You fall. You are lost. But you may be someone with nothing. You may be weeping today over the loss of a loved one and feel like you are worthless. You may have lost your job. You may seem, feel you have no friends, no future. But yet if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a standing with Almighty God. And I'm not going to sit to you and lie to you and promise that that means necessarily that life on earth will, will, will suddenly get better. But it means you have standing with God. It means your cries in the darkness over your your bereavement and 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 your 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 sorrow and 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 your fears and and this, your your sickness or your finances whatever it is you're crying to God for they are heard by God on high because of Jesus and because you have standing because of Jesus with Almighty God. Take courage, if you believed. You are, you've arisen eternally. You belong to Almighty God. Notice too, it says at the end of verse 34 that he will be opposed. We see that in the Gospels. We see that today in the Gospels, of course, that led in the province, providence of God to the cross. All part of God's plan. But even today, being a Christian can be very, very hard because of the opposition of the world to the true Christ. And finally, no, two more things, sorry. He will suffer, verse 35. He says to Mary, a sword will pierce your own soul also. Meaning that, and we see this at the cross as Mary is there watching her own son suffering maybe she didn't fully realize until later for even her own sin the sins of the world sins of all who truly believe paid in full on the cross 
What a saviour. Suffering in the place of his people. And lastly, the last thing Simeon says is that the thoughts from many hearts will be revealed, uncovered, disclosed. They will, people's true response will be seen because of their, sorry, sorry the, the state of people's hearts will be seen by their response to Christ. Remember back in John chapter 1, his own did not receive him. That's John 1, 11. Those who would claim to be his, the Pharisees, teachers of the law, the Sadducees, all the rulers did not receive him. Their hearts were exposed. But if you do believe but who all, to those who did receive him, John 1, 12, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who are born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Have you believed? If you have believed, your heart is exposed. Not the hardness of it, but the fact that he has breathed life into you. And you have new life. But at what a cost. And it is wonderful to celebrate at Christmas time the incarnation. It is wonderful to celebrate his great salvation he's brought for us. But it's important to consider the cost. Because that humbles us and helps us to worship. To reflect on this record, the child in the arms of Simeon is the eternal God who is at the Father's side, who has become flesh and visited this broken, lost world, not simply to teach us, but to give himself for us. He was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And because he purchased that peace, that consolation, that comfort, we can now say, now you are letting your servant depart in peace whenever that comes. So let's not give up hope at the end of 2020. Let's not look at the darkness and the disappointment and pain of this year. We don't ignore it because it's real, as we looked at a few weeks ago in the Psalms. We're real about it. But we don't just look there. We search the scriptures. We look at who Jesus is. Yes, we're real about our fears for 2021, but again, we don't only look there. We look at who Jesus is. He is our comfort. He is our salvation. He is our light. He is the promised one who is coming again. And we have that hope. We have, if we have believed on him, that great salvation because he is that great salvation. We have him who holds the future and we can worship him because of that great cost. Let's do that. Let's stop now this message and pray. And even after I've stopped praying, go into this day worshipping him who at great cost has become your salvation and your light and has given you life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for our Jesus. Thank you that he's come to bring us true and eternal comfort. Thank you he's come to bring us true and eternal life. Thank you that he's carried away our sins. Thank you that he holds us in his hand. But thank you that all of this is great cost 
that his own hands and side were pierced, that he was separated from your love on the cross to bring us into your life and your eternal presence. Help us to be ready, longing for his coming and help us to trust you for 2021. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you richly.